Hello my dear students welcome back to my online class I am Anjana Jindal and today I am back here with chapter number 12 of our English Mulberry book and it's part 3 the name of the chapter is the girl who hated books so children in my previous videos of this chapter that is part 1 and 2 I had explained you the story and we discussed some exercises so now in this video I am going to discuss the question answers and rest of the exercises of this chapter. Okay, with this our chapter will be completed. So let's learn. So children, here is reference to context. See here, a context is given. That is an extract from the story is given, and based on this extract, few questions are given which you have to answer. So let's read the lines. Worse still, her parents were always bringing home more books. They read at breakfast and lunch and dinner. So, children, her parents, Mina's parents, always used to bring more and more books, isn't it? And the books were everywhere, no? Yeah. And the parents were that much fond of reading that they used to read at the breakfast, at lunch, and at dinner table as well, isn't it? Yes. So, let's see. the questions question a in what way was meena different from her parents so children in what way was meena different yes meena was different the way like the parents were very much fond of reading isn't it they loved books yes and whereas whereas meena hated books so this was the difference isn't it so let's see answer meena was different from her parents as they loved books and kept books everywhere but meena hated books right now see question b list three things that meena did that show us that she was bad mannered so children uh, was meena good mannered no no she was bad mannered why if you say that she was bad mannered then why you have to tell the things with that show us that she was bad mannered no yes so what were the three things the three things that meena did were yes see whenever the parents used to ask her no she always used to refuse for reading isn't it she never used to read even a single book isn't it so this shows that she was bad mannered why because she was refusing to her parents isn't it yes we should obey our parents no yeah but she used to refuse and also uh, that uh, she uh, she shouted at her parents no and uh, stamped her foot and shouted that i hate books i hate books isn't it and whenever the parents uh, used to speak aloud no so that she could hear so she used to put her hands over her ears isn't it she used to cover her ears with her hands so these all things shows All, all these things show that she was bad mannered so let's see first one meena hated books and refused to read a book isn't it next one she covered her ears when her parents tried reading to her and the third one she also stamped her foot and shouted right so now children Question C: Which word in these lines is an antonym for better? So, children, the antonym. You know what is an antonym? Yes, antonym is the opposite. The word opposite in meaning is called antonym, right? So, better is the comparative degree of the adjective good, isn't it? And what is the opposite of good? Yes, bad. bad is the opposite of good so better is the comparative degree of good so what is the comparative degree of bad yes worse yeah the word worse which is already given here in these lines also right so worse is the antonym so answer is worse is an antonym for better so children let's let's see another extract that is question number 4 when her parents came in that afternoon they could not believe their eyes so children when the parents came back what they saw 
Why couldn't they believe their eyes? Because something strange happened, you know? Yes, and what was that strange thing? Yes, the parents saw Meena reading a book. Isn't it? That was strange. So let's see the questions which are based on these lines in which we have to answer. So question A, where was Meena when her parents returned? So children, uh, where was Meena sitting that time? Yeah, she was sitting in the middle of the dining room, no? Yes, with the books. Yes. So the answer is, Meena was in the middle of the dining room when her parents returned. Now question B, what had happened to the room? So children, what had happened to the room? The room was all a mess, no? Yeah, monkeys torn the curtains and all, isn't it? The table legs were chewed by the rabbits, no? Yes, all the dishes were broken, all that, everything was scattering here and there in the room, no? Yes, but the parents were not surprised, the parents were, uh, means uh, they were not shocked with these things, with the condition of the room. But they were surprised to see Meena, no? Yes. So let's see the answer, what happened to the room? The whole room was in a mess. The curtains were gone. The dishes were broken. And the table legs were chewed up. Now see like uh, question number C. Explain they couldn't believe their eyes in your own words. So children just explain this, uh, these words that uh, they couldn't believe their eyes. Means they were shocked. They couldn't believe their eyes. Means they were shocked to see whatever had happened, no? Yeah, what they saw. They got surprised, isn't it? Yes. So let's see the answer. They couldn't believe their eyes means that they were very surprised by what was happening. And what was happening? Yes, Meena was reading a book. Yes. So children, now read, lift, reflect and write. So these are the direct questions. So let's see question number 5. What were the different kinds of books that Meena's parents had bought for her? So children, what were the different kinds of books? So many books the parents used to bring, no? Yes. So, uh, you know, the big shiny picture books when she was very small. Isn't it? And after that when she grew, then they uh, bought some alphabet books, nursery rhyme books and after that adventure stories, fairy tales. Isn't it? These all uh, types of books they bought for her, no? Yes. So let's see the answer. Meena's parents had bought big shiny picture books, alphabet books and nursery rhyme books as well as fairy tales and adventure stories. Isn't it? Yes. So now, let's see the next question. That is question number 6. Why do you think Meena hated books? So children, why Meena hated books? Yeah, one thing was that the books were everywhere, no? Yes, that was the main reason. See, if you remember that in the beginning of the story, I told you that Meena said these words that they are always in the way. Means the books are always in her way. That's why she started hating the books. Means wherever she used to walk into her room or wherever her vision goes, everywhere books, books, books. She can see just the books, books, books. So that's why she hated books. Isn't it? Yes. So the answer is, I think Meena hated books because in her house, Books were always in her way. Now see, question number 7. Why did Meena begin reading? So children, why did Meena begin reading? What was the reason that she started reading? If she hated books, she never used to uh, touch a book even, no? Yeah. So why? What was the reason? Yes, when, uh, do you remember when all the books were fallen, no? Yeah, so when the books fall in, that time all the creatures, all the characters, they came out of the books, no? 
the people the animals isn't it the fairies all they came out so and uh, they started messing up the room so and a lot of noise was there like uh, uh, thumping grunting barking and also meena got irritated no that time and she wanted uh, them to go back isn't it but uh, she couldn't find the way that how to let them go back into the box so she once she opened the book isn't it the very firstly when she opened the book so what happened they didn't go back instead the birds flew away isn't it the uh, flock of birds no lot of birds came out and started flying here and then and then she all of sudden she simply closed the book immediately isn't it so then she thought after that what she thought then she started reading the books so that she will come to know that uh, which character belongs to which book isn't it this was the reason no that meena uh started reading yes so the answer is meena began reading because that was the only way the characters from the books would go back into their own books so children now let's see question number 8 what surprised meena's parents when they returned home that afternoon so children what was the surprise why the parents were uh, shocked what was the surprise what change they saw yes they saw meena reading a book isn't it yeah this thing surprised them no yes and what do you think brought about this change in meena so maybe i think uh, uh, like maybe after reading so many books she started enjoying isn't it or she might have felt uh, uh the joy of reading or the importance of reading isn't it yes so let's see the answer meena's parents were surprised when they saw meena reading a book i think after reading many books meena must have realized the joy of reading see children reading is also a joy no yeah see question number 9 what advice would you give to a friend who says she or he does not enjoy reading so what advice would you would you give to your friend yes i think uh, if someone is not uh, um if someone does not enjoy reading so um, i think the, the person should start reading with the books uh, of her own choice no means in a particular field if a uh, uh, person is having interest related to that field if the book will be provided to that person then he or she will definitely read with little interest no and slowly slowly right uh, he or she will enjoy reading isn't it yeah so i would advise him or her to read the books of his or her own interest okay so the children these are the question answers so children here is the exercise of word wall okay so the question number 1 it is based on collective nouns so children do you know what are collective nouns yes collective nouns means the group names isn't it yes so collective nouns are the names of a collection or a group of people or things like uh, you know a group of birds is called a flock see a flock of birds uh, flew out of the books now when meena opened a book yes so the same way these are the collective nouns as a group of birds is called a flock so a flock flock is a collective noun okay so see question 1 here are a few more collective nouns match them with the pictures so see children pictures are given isn't it and in the middle you can see the collective nouns are given so you have to match them okay with the correct picture <coughs> so children uh, in picture a see uh, what is given there in picture a yes elephants are given no yes so a group of elephants is called what is it called yes it is called a herd 
so we can put a here in front of herd herd is a collective noun for elephants group of elephants okay now you can see b picture b what is given here chicks yes so a group of chicks is called brood yes so just write down b in front of brood now see picture c so monkeys are sitting isn't it yes they had torn all the curtains of meena's uh, dining room no yes <laughs> so a group of monkeys is called troop so just put c in front of the word troop now see picture d yes geese isn't it yeah the so group of geese is called what is it called yes gaggle so right put d in front of gaggle now picture d picture e dogs yes dogs are there no yes so a group of dogs is called yes pack so just write down e in front of pack now picture f what are these yes these are kittens so a group of kittens is called litter yes so just write down f in front of litter now see picture g what are these yes these are ants so a group of ants is called what is it called yes colony colony of ants right now picture h yes bees you can see the bees here so a group of bees is called swarm so just write down h in front of swarm now picture i yes these are rhinoceros yes so a group of rhinoceros is called crash so put i in front of the word crash now the last one that is j these are lions yes these are lions so the group of a group of lions is called pride so write down j in front of the word pride so these are the collective nouns okay children so children now our next exercise is based on kinds of books you know kinds of books like an atlas you know what is an atlas atlas is a book that shows us the maps of the world no you would have uh, listened about the atlas no yes the word maps are there yes so in this way now in this exercise the question is related to the kinds of books okay so here is our question here is a list of some types of books write a short definition for each so the question is asking us to write a short definition on each of the uh, type of book which is which has been listed here one by one i'll show you so the first word is dictionary you know what is a dictionary children dictionary uh is a book no see children if we want to find the meaning of any word we always search the meaning in a dictionary no yeah and uh, how we search the meaning there the words are written in a in an alphabetical order so that uh, we can find out the words very easily okay so a short definition for dictionary is a book that gives a list of the words in alphabetical order with their meanings okay next one is album so children what is an album you know uh, it is also a book where you used to collect the stamps photographs or the pictures isn't it or the some cartoon pictures or the stickers collection of all that you, know, you do in a album you make a album and paste all that over there yes so a short definition for album is a book in which you keep photographs stamps etc okay now the next is diary so children what is a diary 
See, it's also a type of book, no? Yes, where you can write. Yes, you can write your thoughts, your private thoughts, your personal thoughts, your experiences. Uh, see, uh, you would have heard about the diary that the some people uh, used to write diaries. Means what, whatever happened in their life, no, all those events uh, they used to write and their personal diaries, everyday events. Means they used to share their feelings with their diary, personal diary, isn't it? So a short definition for diary is a book in which you can write your experiences and your private thoughts. Okay. So now next one is catalog. So children, have you heard about catalog? See, catalog is a book containing a complete list of items. See, if you would have gone to the market with your mother, no, and uh, she would have uh, bought some uh, cosmetics. So, usually, no, uh, the shopkeeper used to give a catalog, a book type, where all the items, cosmetic items are listed over there with their prices. Isn't it? So, then uh, shopkeeper used to give off a particular company, so that, uh, okay, now see, uh, whatever you want to buy, you can buy. So, that is a catalog. So, a short definition for catalog is a complete list of items or things that people can look at and buy. Now, next is directory. So, what is a directory? Children, directory is a book containing a list of information. Means like uh, the phone numbers or uh, the addresses and all, no? Yeah. Or the information of... Uh, uh, the staff of any company. So, that particular will be the directory of that company, no? Big companies, multinational companies. Yeah, so that is directory. So, a short definition for directory is a book containing lists of information in alphabetical order. See, why we uh, put in alphabetical order? So, that children, so that it would be easy for us to search, isn't it? Yes. Now, the last kind of book is Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia uh, is a book or you can see a set of books giving information on many subjects. Many subjects or on many aspects of one subject you can say. Means a thorough information about many on, on many subjects or the many topics. So encyclopedia, a short definition is a book giving information on many subjects. Okay. So, these are the short definitions of all these types of books. So, children, now our next exercise is grammar time. You will enjoy this. So, children, see a picture is given here. You can see a picture on your screen. So, can you tell me what, what the picture shows? Yes, this picture shows a classroom. Yes, this is the picture of a classroom where... Child is writing something on the board, no? Yes. The teacher may be taking test or something, isn't it? Yes. So, children, uh, in the classroom, can you tell the sentences which teacher speaks commonly? Means the teacher speaks commonly few sentences. Can you tell? Okay. The question is based on this only. See, here is the question. Look at this picture. Write down five imperative sentences that the teacher could say. You may include the sentences that your teacher says to the class. Okay. So, let's see what I have given you the sentences. See children, when teacher used to take a revision test no, or the board test. So, teacher used to call all the students one by one. No, Yeah. And teacher used to call all of you when teacher asked a question. Then all of you used to raise the hands. No, ma'am, I, ma'am, I, ma'am, I. Isn't it? So, what teacher says that, okay, one by one by turn, I will call you. So, teacher speaks the name, no? And then call. Yes. So, you can give the first sentence like, uh, teacher says like, uh, Jimmy, write the answer on the blackboard. Right? Yes. And then the next two, uh, sometimes, no? Teacher used to call another child and uh, ask her to just uh, wait there somewhere, no? So, that for her or his turn. Isn't it? Just to save the time because, you know, uh, whenever teacher is taking a board test or oral test, so teacher wants that each and every child should get the chance. 
isn't it she tries her level best to give the chance to all the students isn't it yeah so same way you can say rahul please stand next to the door and wait for your turn isn't it yes and sometimes you know children when you are talking when you are talking to your partner no and teacher notices that uh, you okay you are talking so teacher speaks the name of the children that mohan and sunil both of you stop talking isn't it she speaks up the names and asks you to stop talking isn't it yes and sometimes it happens like a uh, if uh, the whole class is making noise then what teacher say teacher says teacher what teacher says she says no like all of you please keep quiet isn't it yes so and also sometimes see if you are distracted i means you are not looking at the board you sometimes it happens no like you are busy in looking here and there looking at your friend or another child sitting in the class that what that child is doing okay he is talking i should tell to the ma'am here and there you are distracted no and when teacher sees you that uh, okay you are not looking at the board then what teacher says teacher speaks up the name and ask you to look at the board no yes like karan look straight at the blackboard isn't it so these all are the imperative sentences other sentences also you can write what you feel okay so children here our next exercise is based on spelling so here the words ending in c children you know when we uh, make the present participle form of a verb we add ing isn't it and when we uh, make a past tense form of a verb we add ed in regular verbs in case of regular past right we add ed so this uh, you have already studied in the chapter of forms of verbs no or the tenses also yes forms of verbs and tenses you have read all these things so here are the words uh, ending in c so here is a rule that the words that end in c they take k or you can say they add k after c before adding ed or ing see the example is given like frolic f r o l i c so as this word ends in c so it will add k and after adding k it will add ed or ing okay like frolic so f r o l i c then it will add k and then ed okay this way it will form it will be formed as frolic so same way here few more words are given to you which you have to convert okay as shown in the example so you have to add ed and ing and how will you add ed and ing first you will add k at the end means after the last c last letter c you will add k and then you will add ed or ing okay so let's see the first word is picnic p i c n i c picnic so the last letter is c you can see right so you will add k here first and then you will add ed so p i c n i c k e d okay now when we have to make the present participle form means ing we have to add so p i c n i c k i n g picnicking right similarly traffic again we will add k and then ed so traffic t r a f f i c k e d similarly trafficking so t r a f f i c k i n g trafficking now the panic word is panic so panicked P A N I C panic, then K, and then E D we will add. Okay. Similarly, in case of I N G, panicking, P A N I C panic, then K, and then I N G. It will become panicking. Now the last word given here is mimic. So mimic M I M I C mimic. So M I M I C K E D mimicked. Similarly, in the case of ing, m i 
M I C K I N G mimicking. Okay, children. I hope you understood this. Okay. Children, I hope you all have understood all the exercises very well. And now it's the time for your home assignment. So here is your home assignment. Write well. It's a, it is writing a book review. So children, here you have to write a book review. Think of your favorite book and then fill in the graphic organizer and then write a review of the book. Okay. So with this children, our chapter is completed. So now I hope you all have understood the whole chapter very well. Okay then, bye-bye, take care. Thank you for watching the video.